ladies and gentlemen, Demi and Prince. Hi. He knows how to make an entrance. It's my computer shoes. I like those shoes. Thanks. Very stylish. Perfect segue into the topic we're focused on today, which is tools that we're using for AI. Specifically, seven practical tools that we're using for AI. And I'm, I'm using my AI uh, chat GPT script writing software here uh, to remind me what we're talking about. I dig it. And we have our head of post-production, Demian Krentz, here. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You wore an athletic shirt because you've been skating computer skating across the city just to get here today? It does help keep things cool. It wicks the sweat. It does. Yeah. Although I think I did pit out a little bit, but whatever. Yeah. Can't yeah. really tell, but that's the athletic shirt sort of kind of hides that. But what's like the creepiest thing that you've seen in AI? A lot of the stuff that Midjourney, a lot of the stuff that it, that it churns out is super creepy. Mostly because uh, Midjourney, for whatever reason, does not understand how to visualize a human hand. And so you'll see examples. That it's got the foot stuff down. It's got feet. It, it loves hands. feet, faces, bodies, weird yeah. scenarios, mushrooms, as we saw earlier. But it just doesn't know how human hands mm. should look and feel. Okay. It'll make claw hands, or it'll <laughs> make like 17 fingered hands, or it'll make hands that look like feet. Right. Or it's very creepy. It, it's. It's like, the thing is, it's surprisingly creepy and it's surprisingly inaccurate. Yeah. It's like a foundational part of what a human form should look like. Right. And you would think that they'd be like, it's the hands, that's the face and then the hands, but it just is like, nah, I don't know how to do hands. Yeah. It is creepy. It's also like, it is still something that is effective when it's used the right way though, I think. So I can see us within the next six to 12 months use a, an image generation tool like Midjourney to create something for one of our clients that either they hadn't thought of or we needed to tell a, a joke perhaps or um, maybe Joanne's busy. Joanne's our designer, one of our designers by the way. Shout out to Joanne. Thanks for everything that you do. Um, I mean I think one of the biggest barriers to entry with like Midjourney for example like you really have to understand how to prompt it the right way mm -hmm. for it to deliver the thing you're looking for. Otherwise you're gonna get these crazy uh, surreal photos with claw hands and it's creepy. And even um, if you do know how to prompt it the right way. It's not perfect. It'll give you claw hands. It's good for some things right now. Yes. It's not good, f it's not replacing video production or photo production. Um, but there are certain instances where it looks like it would play a role, like for example, creative concepts. You know, for our purposes, we deliver a lot of creative concepts for our clients. And when you wanna like imagine something and you need to do it quickly, mm -hmm. um, it could be a tool in the tool belt to help you do that. Um, and it's, it's pretty effective for that purpose. One more question before we get into like the actual diving deeper into those tools is like, for, you know, for clients that work with us, um, you know, Fun Guy is all about storytelling and telling your story authentically, mm -hmm. right? So authenticity is like kind of the key word here. Um, and I think that's something that I'm wrestling with is like, how do we stay authentic when we're, if we're using AI for different aspects of video production? You know, is there sort of a possible line that could be crossed? Have you thought about that? I have, and I think that it all comes down to what resonates with you as a human being. You yeah. can put all these prompts into all of these AI generation tools, the chat GPTs and the mid journeys and all the ones that I don't know about or use or anything like that. And it's going to spit out the claw hands. It's going to spit out the bad grammar. It's going to spit out the, the stuff that is crap. Yeah. And, and so you have to be able to, and, and so the, as far as authenticity goes, if it doesn't resonate with Matt, then it's not going to resonate with the client. And if it doesn't resonate with the client, it's not going to resonate with the customers. And so we, we're still in control of the AI. And we're only using it <laughs> for a little while longer. <laughs> yes, just for right now, <laughs> we are. Control is a. We think we're in control. Maybe they're in control, controlling us, controlling them. We we could. Well, we could be in that simulation. Yeah. And I don't think that they're doing a bad job. <laughs> you keep it up, AI. Good job. Thank you for so, letting us think that we're in control. So that's ultimately what it is. It's like a human being needs to, is the ultimate consumer of this stuff, and so. 
all these tools are at this point, until it gets to the point where AI is creating AI is creating AI, and it's just all this huge giant feedback loop that we won't even be a part of or care about, it's all these are, it's, they might as well just be, um, they're just tools, like yeah, you said. For sure. Well, let's go through the seven tools <laughs> that I promised everybody we would go through at the beginning of this podcast. Tool number one, uh-huh. mid-journey. Uh, just off the top of my head. Well, let's, let's, let's go through, yeah, we don't yeah. have to hit them all right. Like We'll come up with them as we go, but mid-journey is the first one. And for people, we just talked about mid-journey, but mid-journey is a, an AI tool to generate images. And, and people are using it just for funsies, to take a photo maybe of themselves, mm-hmm. put it into the mid journey thing, and then it spits out a, like a crazy image of you as a dragon or yeah. look, looking just more, even more beautiful. Um, you see a lot on people's like Facebook feeds and Instagram feeds, like they're putting their own photos that were created in mid journey. But we're using it to create concepts. That's one of the ways that we're using. Like right now, I've used it to generate some, uh, like a new product launch and creating some visual concepts to just get the ideas going, not to actually even use it for a presentation, for example. But that's one of the ways we're using it. I put my head on a dog body. Okay, well that's just for funsies, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well so you're using it for funsies. Mm -hmm. So that's one way you can use it. But you can use it for... Well, let's say, for example, if our one of our clients were launching a pet, they're a pet food company, right? And they're selling logo on a dog head that could be an idea there's no bad ideas uh-huh. right in a brainstorm this is just a brainstorm right. um, you could do that that's something you could do and you could do it very quickly you go on to the mid journey feed mm-hmm. you basically type in imagine mm-hmm. like you kind of have this prompt thing you do you type in the word imagine forward slash and then it, and then you type in your prompt create uh, put my head on a dog <laughs> dog body uh, eating uh, pet food on a sunny day in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And then it will, and you go enter, and then it creates like four different versions of mm-hmm. that. And then you could pick one of those versions and create variations, for example. And it will just kind of automatically do this within like seconds. One of the things that I think is super valuable with any of these new technologies is to work with people and to watch what other people do with this stuff. Right. And so even if you haven't decided to use it yourself, to educate yourself and to, to seek out people who are using this stuff and just, may, and, and just say, like, how are they using it? What are their prompts? And, and so on. I, it's always, it's, a, it's super enlightening and, it's, and it, it accelerates the learning curve almost at, a, at the way an AI would learn. You're kind of watching other people learn, mm-hmm. and you're learning in the process. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. What's what's number two on the list? <laughs> the one that everybody loves to uh, hate on and <laughs> loves to love. <laughs> Chat, Chat GPT. GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Great example of something that I used it for recently is a writing tool, really. Mm-hmm. I think, um, and but it's also a market research tool. Um, and we had a podcast that we just did where we interviewed. Tony Lee Rudnicki, who's a, a fractional CMO who's using ChatGPT for her clients in different ways. And she says, like, two big use cases for her from a marketing perspective is market research. Like, you could do a competitive analysis mm-hmm. of your competitors. So, like, if you're trying to figure out, like, how do I, like, position our company a certain way? And what's the message I should use that would help us be different than the other companies in our space? Mm-hmm. That's one way that you can use it. And, and it kind of gives you this it's sort of, like, competitive analysis and you can you have to prompt it a, a certain way mm-hmm. to make that work um, and you ask it a bunch of questions but it's the same questions that if you're somebody who does market research you would ask those questions anyways yeah. just that chat GPT kind of gets there faster well um, then I I agree that that, that chat GPT chat, chat GPT can be used as like a an assistant or a, or a quasi search engine, but a lot of the things that I've heard people complaining about recently has been the Chat GPT is not accurate. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Is like it is just sort of it's garbage in, garbage out, mm-hmm. right? So it's crawling, and we know we you know I think most people who are really interested in this topic probably mm-hmm. know how some of this stuff works a little bit. Um, it's crawling through the information that exists yeah. out there online, and and some of the and when we wrote, so the other use case besides market research from my perspective with writing is to, you can have it write like a first draft of a script, for example, for, it could be something that explains how something works, Mm -hmm. or it could be a script that's like, uh, we did a, the example you were talking about was 
for a friend of mine that were helping him create a bunch of scripts for TikTok. Mm -hmm. And it was all about these celebrity weddings. And we just churned out a hundred like celebrity wedding scripts. And a percentage of those scripts were just inaccurate. Like they weren't even real celebrities that got married. It was like fake. It was like these weddings never even happened. <laughs> so there is like a total, there's a lot of like things that you have. It's just a tool. You have to check it. It's a, it's, it's a great way though to create starting points for a mm. script or for an idea. Anybody can join ChatGPT, just like Midjourney. It's free and you have to basically tell it, create, write me a 300 word ah. blog article on such and such, but what'd you put? So this was a funsies one, but this is, I think, but it kind of, it, it goes in line with that idea of, I need it to help me get started. And so I said, please write a letter as if you were Bram Stoker's Dracula breaking up with Mina. I'd like the letter to be heartfelt, but truthful in a humorous mm. way. Dracula needs to be real with her. Anachronistic language is funny in this context. Try not to use too much slang. And then... <laughs> wow, that's good. And, and so and it, you, and the more detail you give it like that, yeah. you kind of you, you narrow down the paths and the roads. And then we'll we'll post it the actual thing, but I cannot wait to read it. But like one of the one of the like he says. Um, but then I, I started there, and then I eventually ended up going to okay. Now the same thing. So he wrote the letter. We'll post it. Everybody can read it, and we'll maybe we'll go back and do some things. But <laughs> I said my next post was okay. Same thing, but now Dracula needs to fire Renfield. Using corporate HR speak is preferred. Dracula is also very fond of Renfield, but he needs to make it sound like he's not revealing too much about his personal feelings because this letter will be sent in an email to all of Count Dracula Incorporated. Mm. So this is the writing prompt. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, okay, great. And then it took me a few more prompts, but I finally got to what I actually, what I, the, so it took me like four or five prompts and I needed to change things like, I need specific examples that are from the world of the Dracula story. For example, instead of company's supply chain, write things like company's supply of virgin blood. Mm. So, so it's way more on brand. Yeah, you need to like say, this is where the joke starts. Yep. This, this is the guardrails for the joke. This is, and then it fills in the blank. And, and then the best part was that as you, as you drill down into these prompts, the final, it finally says, chat GPT says, I apologize for misunderstanding your request earlier. Yeah, it does get a little emotional. Right? Is it passive aggressive, do you think? Or is it kind of genuine, do you think? I think it's genuine. Okay, or at good. least it's trying to be oh, genuine. Good. Thanks, chat GPT. For and so we'll, we'll post, we'll post what, what we'll it We'll post that article. With. I'm so excited to read that. Uh, it's great. And it could be used for HR. If you're an HR person, communications person, you're watching this right now mm -hmm. or listening to this, just copy paste the letter that Demian got uh, uh, posted <laughs> for you and use that when you're letting people go, right? Uh, won't go, won't be bad for you. It you might get let go too uh, after posting that, but. Okay, so that's great. So we've got two tools out of the seven. Uh-huh. Tool number three, and uh, Danielle, if you want to do some Googling to uh, find a couple AI tools we should be talking about. That um, would help a lot. A tool that, it, kind of uh, shortcuts the process a little bit is a, a tool that we have called Descript. And Descript allows you to edit uh, video using uh, transcripts. So you transcribe uh, an interview with a client and it's printed out and as you edit the text, you can cut and paste and rearrange the text and then the video will f and audio will follow suit. Right, so you're literally, you can watch in the software the words as they're being said, you can also watch the video and the, you hear the sound and literally as you're cutting, you're moving this text up here, you're cut, just editing like a Word document. Mm -hmm. It's actually editing the video live in real mm -hmm. time. And that's pretty, that's pretty powerful. It's super cool and it, 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 it does make the, the lift of editing longer, longer transcribed interviews uh, lighter. Yeah, and the, we, do, we do use that, our creative directors and you, every, like mm -hmm. the creative team, we're using that right now for mm -hmm. a, a ton of our uh, videos. It's that an we're integral part of our yeah, process. Absolutely. It's not AI. Why is it not AI? It it's, seems like it is. It's not AI because you are still making the decisions about what to keep and what to throw away. Right. All the software is doing is it's just 
software, doing software stuff. Okay. Here's one, one challenge to that, though. We're using it also, though, for voiceover, correct? And we're using that when, like, we're making a video mm -hmm. that has my voice. Yes. Right? And it's a video like this, where yes. it's, we're just sharing our perspective, but like, hey, I didn't like the way that I said that. Yes. And we're training it on my voice. Yes. And then we're editing the words in, in the script to say something different than I was actually recorded, mm -hmm. right? That's one of the ways for like a video, mar a marketing video, right? where it's my voice. Right. That's voice synthesis. Voice synthesis. Is it pretty close to AI, though? Maybe, could, maybe, so maybe it is. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, so that's but, not AI. But maybe some of the, some of the, uh, the, the behind the scenes processing that is occurring is leveraging AI technologies. Mm. But the way that we use it right. is not strictly AI. Is there any way that we could use a script and call it AI? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you I mean, semantics really at this point. Yeah. If you want to call it AI, I'm. You I can call it AI. What we're saying is you can call it AI, yeah. but you would be wrong. Yeah. But it's voice synthesis, which is sort of in this world of like smarter mm -hmm. tools, smart tools that I just mm -hmm. came up with. TM. I think Danielle has some information? Yeah, Danielle, what do you got for us? So I looked up, is voice synthesis AI? It looks like it is. It looks like it uses AI to replicate either your voice or a totally different voice. So I was half right. Okay. I think you were just wrong. Oh. Danielle, can I be half wrong? You can't be if you're all the way wrong. That's that's a good point. You yeah, don't need AI really, to tell you that. Yeah, no, you don't need AI there, did you? Where were you at AI on that? I was going to move on to the next tool because I think we proved you wrong, and that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> tool number three. It just feels good to let it go. To yeah. let it just, ah. Uh. Well, you know, that was tool number three. Fourth tool, Autopod. Autopod is a tool that uses AI to automatically cut podcasts video podcasts like this, a video conversation, where it will recognize the right time to cut to a close-up shot of me, for example, because it knows that I'm talking. But then it might cut to a wide shot, for some reason, <laughs> when it's time to connect the dots, and then it will cut to a close-up shot when somebody else is talking. But it might not have cut to that close-up shot because Demian wasn't talking. I wasn't talking. One of the other cool things about Autopod is that it optimizes the uh, the formats. Uh, it optimizes the creation of the formats that you need for the various social media platforms. Mm. So if you need, it, it, it'll auto reframe your face. Uh, if you if you have a two shot, it, like if you only have a one camera shoot, it'll auto reframe your face for a vertical orientation. It'll it'll square it'll square format your video. It can even adjust graphics if you use the right templates. That's pretty badass. So I do think that it is it can possibly be something that we uh, add to our workflow uh, in the next few months, or it may be something that we recommend to uh, our, our larger team as a tool that they could use. But uh, because we are an Adobe house and Adobe is constantly innovating, there is a pretty good chance that um, the Adobe tools are really close, if not already there, in terms of that kind of thing. So if you are a content creator who uses the Adobe tools, and you already have a su subscription of that, check that out too. It may have what you need now, or it may have what you need in the near future. Adobe, it's for video. God, I hope they sponsor us. <laughs> Fifth tool, Jasper. Um, I feel like this one's been around a little bit longer. It's something that marketers are using. Maybe not as much for video production, although it writes scripts and, and that sort of a thing, but it does do a lot of content marketing writing, so like blog writing, and it uses intelligent blah 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 bloops to write content, write social posts, write blogs, write articles, white papers, and the like. So I think that's one that's more well known for content marketing, a little bit outside of just video production, but if you're looking to try a writing tool, Jasper is definitely one that you can check out. I think the, the thing that I like most about Jasper is how it integrates a lot of these. So there's some stuff that, that may have a higher quality because it's more focused, like MidJourney or ChatGPT or whatever. But Jasper brings a lot of those, the, those different technologies all in one place. So it's like a, a low barrier to, of entry. Well, I guess free is free, so MidJourney and ChatGPT can, and 
some of the other voice synthesis stuff can be free, but this one kind of uh, aggregates all that stuff and it gives you kind of a holistic and template driven approach mm. to be able to create this kind of stuff. So it's, it's maybe easier and maybe less threatening for somebody to try out Jasper. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the vibe I get from yeah. it. Yes. Okay. Syn oh, yeah, synthesia, yeah. synthesia, synthesia. AI, correct me if I'm wrong or don't correct me if I'm not. Synesthesia or synesthesia, synesthesia, synesthesia. synesthesia will actually use an AI generated person. Like actually you'll see a person on screen mm -hmm. reading your scripts to you, like mm -hmm. an, kind of like an explainer video, talking head video. I think this has an ethnic component to it where a person who is, uh, is trying to uh, attract or enter into a market where you need to look like the person that you're trying to talk to, I think that's a huge use case for this particular uh, video application. Because not only are you able to pick your talent and write the script for them, but you can have that exact same script spoken by a person who looks uh, Japanese, a person who looks Ghanaian, a person who looks Brazilian, a person right. who looks like they're from Ohio. It allows you to uh, repurpose your message quickly and easily using many different avatars, which is like, it's, it's the top of their sell, it's the top of the page selling point. Right. It's like you can have you, any face in the world speak your message. And I think that's a really powerful tool for marketers when they're trying to speak to a very specific audience. Yeah. That you can you have one script and quickly and easily have quote unquote talent deliver that in different languages using different faces to many different places. It kind of rhymed and I liked it. <laughs> hey. Nailed it. Yeah, thanks. Well, another one that's sort of similar to that, it's not necessarily used for video production again, but it's kind of in the same world. It's in like content marketing world is this tool called Botica. Mm -hmm. And it is basically a similar use case in that it's using AI generated models to basically uh, for one applications for e-commerce where you're able to use different models in sort of different ethnicities. Mm -hmm. And then you can add your clothes and sort of model those clothes for like an e-commerce commerce platform. The one thing um, that it's bringing some, you know, some heat to it is that Levi's recently used it and there's a lot of like sort of pushback on whether or not this is sort of like a, the right thing to be doing. Is it sort of affecting, you know, is it some weird way to like not use m certain models? Is it sort of like a, is it like, you know, really authentic because you're actually not even using real people but you're mm -hmm. talking about diversity mm -hmm. um, but at the same time if you're just trying to show a prototype of something this is where it gets blurry I have no idea what the right answer is here but certainly it's it's people are having a hard time with it ultimately it's it's AI is a tool and it creates things that we have as human beings been creating and deciding in many ways for a hundred years as far as the filmed image goes. You know, it's yeah. like it's it's like we've been using stock photography for a long time and so we're 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 using an a quote unquote inauthentic thing to tell an authentic story. I don't know. Yeah. It's we ultimately it comes down to are they gonna steal our gerbs? Yeah, are they taking our gerbs? And I think that in some cases it, it's gonna be great for those creative people who are storytellers and who are strategic mm -hmm thinkers and who are imagine, imagineers, mm -hmm. um, so to speak. It's, it, but there's going to be a lot of like technical jobs that will probably go away because you know that's just the nature of, you know, there's a lot of these moments in time that mm -hmm. where this has happened. You look back, the moral uh, like stuff around um, using AI for some of the so use cases that we mentioned is probably a whole other podcast and probably needs to have other people involved in the room that aren't two white dudes talking about diversity. Um, but like it is an, it is a question that people are asking right now, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer to it, but I do think it's important to know that these tools exist. Mm -hmm. These tools are being used, and you can use these tools. And there's 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 a vast use case for them, and there's there's one coming out every week. It seems yeah. like. So for video production purposes, we talked about our seven practical tools. 
uh, that you can use and at least try. And there's some that we're using every day, there's some that we're gonna start trying, and there's some that we don't even know about exist. So if you know about a tool that we should use. Yeah, for real. Give it to us. Yeah. Tell us. I wanna make my job easier. I don't yeah. wanna eliminate my job though. No, 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 no. So if, if that's the tool you're gonna to send to us, don't. Yeah, don't do that. But do, do give us the ones that make our jobs easier. Yeah, I mean, if you wanna eliminate, don't eliminate anything. Yeah. Create, it's all about creative, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, Demian. Is it quitting time already? It's quitting time. Oh. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Absolutely. This was all created by AI. None of this is real.